How you doing? Hey, Patchy. There's, a, there's an old rule in sports journalism that says no cheering in the press box, right? And we stick to that, but there's no rule that says you can't see something and go, holy shit. And that's what happened back here. I mean, that was insane, dude. Yeah, man, uh, out of nowhere. You know, I've been working that shot. Uh, me and Nate Pettit, uh, my coaches, you know, um, right before we walked out, we were drilling good, and um, it landed, you know. I put him out with it. Was that something that you guys looked at going into the fight and thought, you know what, maybe because of a height difference or a reach or what, whatever, whatever you're looking at, that you thought that something like that might be there for you? No, I developed that knee because I was going against, um, I'm a southpaw, going against orthodox style. If you watch my Gallagher fight, I almost hit him within the first 10 seconds of the fight. I try to knee his head right off. He just like slips his neck and he shoots in on me. But I've been working that shot since 18 months ago in Ireland. And um, I just stuck with it. And I knew that Stott shoots. And I knew that like, he's so naive to think that like, I'm just a grappler. Like I'm a dog in the gym. Like I fight people and like no one outworks me or no one out bullies me or beats me up. So I'm thinking, I know I don't have a lot of knockouts because I'm very good on the ground, but don't think I can't put your lights out because I'm shoot. You know what I mean? I shoot in. I try to strangle you. It's just the easiest way to win. Given his um, his his personality and kind of how he tends to talk a little bit, you know, was was that was there something extra satisfying about putting him out in in that type of a way, or does it did it no. even matter? No, no, it didn't. It, it wasn't extra satisfying. As much as I thought it would be, it wasn't. You know. Um, um, there's nothing satisfying about putting someone out cold or putting someone to, you know, hurting someone or putting damage on someone. Like, he's got a family. I mean, we both got kids, oddly enough, on the same day of the same year. You know what wow. I mean? It's a weird, weird stat, you know? Like, I'm over here looking at him. And I'm like, how'd that happen, <laughs> you know? So I never want to hurt him. And I know, like, hearing the dialogue prior to coming out that video, hearing his story, where he's come from, it's a lot similar to mine, you know what I mean? So... It's just that we're both fighting for the same prize. I wish it was for, well, not really, but too bad it can't be two $500,000 checks and he walks with one too, you know what I mean? But it's winner take all in this game and it's either me or him. And he wants to do the same thing to me. You know, he did it to Archuleta, you know, and granted he got on top of him and landed extra shots, you know? I didn't get on top of him to try to like throw any extra. You know, it's a cruel game, but that's the game we play if it's not, him it's me and i just don't want that to happen you feel like he's somebody you're going to see again at some point down the road i'm sure right i specifically do want to see him again because he was talking all that shit and i was talking a lot of shit and right now we got to see who won in about 60 seconds i wanted to dominate him for 25 minutes to show him that i'm better than him though and i don't think that he even went home thinking i'm better than him now he probably thinks i just caught him so i'm sure we'll see each other again and i want to down the line i'm sure he'll work his way too he's 19 and 2 now so maybe give him sabatello again they could do that again you seemed um really dialed in all week and you know it's probably in his personality to not seem as calm and subdued and kind of laser focused as you but did you feel extra focused this week i guess given what was on the line bro he did his camp, I think, with me when I did my Horiguchi camp, and I watched him train with me. It gave me a, it gave me a thin line. Like, I want to work harder than this guy, I get to see him work. I want to see what he does, I get to see what he does. I get to gauge him against other training partners that I have that he goes with, you know? So not only did I believe I could submit him because my teammates have submitted him in the past, certain guys that I train with, but I also felt like I could hurt him in those ways too. So I think, like, I was just focused on myself this week, not trying to focus on what he can do. I knew he had a great record, but I knew if I did what I could do, i finished that guy all day mm -hmm. of the week. Re you know, regardless of who wins um, in a couple months in Chicago, do you, do you feel like what you did tonight gives either one of those guys something really, really devastating that they have to think about when they think about fighting you? I don't know. You know, I mean... I Shit. I don't know if Pettis really wants to fight me. I knew he was picking Roth to win. I don't know how he could pick that. But I don't think Pettis really wants to fight me. I think Pitbull takes it. You know, you can't pick against him. I want to fight the pound-for-pound pound number one. Like, let Pitbull take it. 
And uh, you know what I mean? I'm hoping he wins and I can fight the best. So yeah. I don't know if they're worried about me. I think they're just worried about their task at hand at the moment. But, you know, regardless enough, I believe I'm the best band and weight in the world. You know, I train with the top guys in the world, some of the best in the world. I believe I'm the best band and weight 135 pounder in the world today. I'm just getting better. I'm just improving now. You know, I'm just growing into my prime now. My first loss really was because of my youth and my immaturity. Had I been done a little bit differently, I think I'd be 19 and 0. But now I'm older, I'm wiser. I feel I'm the best band and weight in the world right now. I'm totally evolved since, you know, a few years back. I'm not just a grappler. You know, I could do everything and I'm here to prove it. What's the plans for the million bucks? Buy my mom a house, take care of my family, um, be smart and stay level. You know, I want to get back in the gym. I want to get back helping my teammates. There's a lot of guys that help me. Um, Farid, Javid, Kobe, Shorty, Jeremy, Mads, Tatiana's coming back to fight. So many people, um, so many sponsors. My coaches, Don, Harry, Dennis, Nate, my manager, Ali, um, T Tommy Guns, Calandra, my uh, Dr. Sean, everybody. You know, so many of my family, Alex, Ash, Dante, everyone that came out. Um, just, I'm grateful for my family, my friends, everyone that came out here to Hawaii. Um, we, had, we had a huge group, and um, I built off their energy, and I'm just happy. I'm grateful to walk away with the million dollars, the belts, and um, just another um, Rufian Stott's name on my record, more importantly. Hey, hey Patchy. Patchy over here? Yes, sir. Hey, Patchy. K Williams for Can Chronicles Media. Congratulations on the win, man. So we know that combat sports or sports in general is 99% mental, probably 1% physical at best. Was tonight match more of a mental warfare for you or was it more physical? Tonight was more uh, mental because I needed to stay level. Stotts was trying to draw like out of me like drama or like um, I think he needs to talk in order to uh, do his work. I felt like I needed to stay mental level level headed because I didn't want to uh, get drawn into like you know any, adding energy to shit I didn't need to you know I want to beat him in a fight. I said I wanted to outskill him and I wanted to be more, you know tactically better than him and that's what I did you know. By the time he realized what happened, he was sleeping. Do you feel as though the things and the strategies that you worked on in training camp leading up into this fight came to light tonight? Yeah, faint him, faint him, make him think I'm wrestling. Maybe I'm not, maybe something else is coming. He put his hands aside, I think to sprawl, you know, blocked the shot a little bit, brought the knee right to his chin. Will you break down the mechanics of how you actually caught him? Show the shoulder, show the shoulder. Clean the chin with my knee. And Danny Sabatello gave me a blueprint on how to beat him. So I knew that when I would feign him, I knew he was going to put his hands down. I knew he was expecting the shot. Just one last question, man. What's your victory meal tonight, man? Steak. Steak. I don't know. I think I'm going to eat a steak tonight. I'm going to be happy, man. I ate a lot before I got here, honestly. I'm actually full. I put a lot of weight back on. Um, you know, it was a good, healthy cut. But we, we ate good today. We ate good last night. So we're just gonna celebrate tonight, enjoy it. I'm gonna buy a round of drinks for all my friends, my family, and uh, just gonna enjoy it. Let's go. Congratulations on the win. Thank you so much. Big shout out, Harry St. Ledger, my jujitsu coach.